Hello. Welcome to my final episode of the Mortal Kombat 11 Sucks series. I recommend you check out my previous episodes before watching this since this is the last one. Now let's get into stupid bald lady. Kronika is a dumb, arrogant, overpowered titan lady who loves being Will Smith. Let's start by talking about just how OP she is. She can fly, teleport, summon sandstorms, blasting sand beams, telekinesis, creates sandballs, has an Assassin's Creed hidden blade, can throw meteors, summon warriors from alternate timelines, immortal, can create an immortal creature, is the mother of two elder gods, can control a fucking dinosaur, and more. But most importantly, can stop time and reverse it. And that's not even counting the power of the hourglass. She honestly should be able to solve any problem and defeat anyone she wants with these abilities. Especially since she has Zawaldo. And Crazy Diamond. Either the developers forgot about how OP she is, or they just don't want her solving 99% of all problems with Zawaldo. The only person who probably doesn't get affected by this is Raiden, but like, just Zawaldo and beat him up yourself, since his allies won't be able to help him. Now let's put a pin on this topic and talk about Raiden. Put a pin in, it. Put pin in. in the end of Mortal Kombat X UT's Dark Raiden to us. January 2019. UT's Dark Raiden to us again. And when MK11 came out, he doesn't even survive to chapter 2. By the Elder God. Why? Seriously, Seriously Chronica, why? You said you wanted to get rid of Raiden. Raiden will not exist. But you wanted to get rid of him. In the next timeline, not in MK11. How will this new era be different? There will be no Raiden. Why did you allow good Raiden to live? Why did you allow good Raiden to try? try? And not Dark Raiden. You know Kronika, you could have tried your most OP ability on him. Lying. What if you told Dark Raiden that if he helped you, you would completely separate Earthrealm with all the other realms? Dark Raiden would gladly work with you, cause that's the whole point of his character. We could have had a good Raiden vs evil Raiden fight, but nah. Just Thanos snap him out. No one will notice. I have another question. Why does Kronika want to get rid of Raiden? She claims that he is the cause of Shinnick's defeat. But my work's perfection has been irreversibly tainted by Raiden's actions. Okay let's go back in history and see our examples. In MK4 Liu Kang defeats Shinnick. In MKX the cages defeat Shinnick. Where the fuck is Raiden? I get that Raiden trained Liu Kang and helps out Earthrealm. But like, you all don't have faith in Fujin? Have faith in me. I'm sure Fujin can train Liu Kang. Or even Bo Raicho. You're drunk. Go back to sleep. I get that getting rid of Raiden will help the bad guys. But will it really solve everything? I would consider getting rid of the god killing powers the cages possess. Which is why I thought Kano captured Johnny in the first place. Luckily, Cassie kinda forgot about the green glowy powers. And never uses it in MK11. Now let's put a pin on this topic and talk about Shinnok. Shinnok is the representation of death, corruption, and darkness. While Satrian is a representation of life, virtue, and light. So after Shinnok's defeat, Kronika wanted to reset the timeline because the balance of good and evil is not 50-50 anymore. But why does Shinnok get to be the representation of evil? Satrian is super OP, so I'm not arguing with her for representing good. Mr. Assface sucks and can get defeated by half the roster in MKX. So why not just let Shao Kahn be the representation of evil? Or Onaga, or Shant Sung, or Guan Chi, or dare I say, Dark Raiden. Why is Kronika so persistent in bringing back Shinnik through time travel? In fact, considering how many times Kronika has resetted the timeline, I bet he's failed her too many times that she's lost count. I've lost count. Is it because she loves him? I doubt it. If you loved your son so much then maybe you would have showed up a couple seconds earlier before he got decapitated. You can literally teleport to anywhere you want at any time. You know what I think. I think Shinnok is just an excuse for resetting the timelines over and over again. To let mommy crony have some funny. <laughs> Anyways let's get back to Raiden. I have an interesting theory as to why Kronika wants to erase Raiden. What if Raiden has the ability to rewind time? Think about it. Armageddon was the perfect timeline Kronika created. Good and evil, 50-50, and Shinnok is still alive. Kronika probably had a Kragism with this. However, Raiden, on his dying breath, 
sends a message to his past self to win against Shao Kahn. I mean, to let him win. You get the point. Though this may seem like a simple ability, Raiden actually resets the Mortal Kombat timeline without the hourglass. Maybe this is the true reason why Kronika wants to annihilate Raiden. Maybe this is why she fears him. Wait hold up. This is NetherRealm Studios we're talking about here. There's no way they can come up with something this convoluted. Never mind Raiden still sucks. Anyways let's get back to Kronika. I have a very simple question for Kronika. Why does Kronika want to do all of this? It's time for a small therapy session. Hello Mrs. Kronika and thank you so much for joining us. It is only a matter of time. So, first question I would like to ask. What is it you want to do? What is your motivation? My work's perfection has been irreversibly tainted by Raiden's actions. I intend to wind time back to its beginning and restart history. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Having good and evil be 50-50, I can vibe with that. Exactly as I foretold. Now, Kronika, honey, another question. Why do you want to do this? The Thunder God has upset the balance of history. Yeah, yeah, I know the what, but I don't know the why. Why do you want to restart the universe? What is it that truly makes you want to do this? My patience has limits. Like, is there some secret backstory you're not telling us? Is it some sort of self-entitlement you're trying to achieve? The hour is late, mortal. Look, girl, I'm not gonna lie. You're kind of boring. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the writers were trying to go with a morally gray area kind of character. Your motive gives off that misunderstood hero kind of a feel, but you have nothing to latch onto. Like, no reason for people to feel intrigued by you. You are beneath notice. You're just pretty much the evil bald lady that we have to defeat at the end of the game, and that's it. I don't think anybody really likes you. Not gonna lie, I sympathize more with Kirby Final Bosses. Unmistakably mortal. I do not serve. I am a titan. Okay, jeez. No need to get that aggressive. Anyways, does restarting the universe have anything to do with your family? Your children? Or maybe your husband? <laughs> ah, speaking of which, I have a very special guest waiting behind the curtains. No! Please welcome Thanos! No! I don't even know who you are. Come, it is time to die. Ah, <laughs> On a serious note though, I do feel like Thanos is a superior version of Kronika. They both have world dominating plans to save everyone. Thanos wants to snap half the population away because he genuinely thinks that's how to save the universe. While Kronika wants good and evil to be 50-50 because... Who knows, she looks cool and can do cool things. But she's not interesting, she has no personality, no reason for me to care, or like this character. Take Scar from the Lion King as an example. Conniving, sarcastic and manipulative, has a large ego and sense of entitlement. But most importantly, always a joy to watch on screen. Oh, I feel simply awesome. <laughs> Must have slipped my mind. Now take all that away from Scar and you'll have the 2019 version of him. A villain with a motive to be king, and nothing else special about him. Mufasa is yesterday's message. My vision is clear and wide ranging. Oh goody. I think this is the key reason why people don't give a shit about Kronika. Because there is no shit to even care about. Oh. Now I want to talk about the final battle. While it was spectacle on a cinematic level, it sucks on a tactical level. What, what were, were they, they thinking? thinking? Both sides make unnecessary decisions. Let's start with the good guys. Raiden brought the special forces, Shaolin monks, and outwar old people to fight Kronika. That's not enough. Get everybody you can find to fight. Get like all 7.5 billion people here. Find more people from Outworld, the Order Realm and Chaos Realm. Use the super powerful Kamido Goo. Everyone needs to be here. This is literally a do or die situation. You need to go all out. Nothing on Earth Realm can stop us. Two words, bitch. Nuclear weapons. Now that Raiden has all the living creatures on his side, let's get back to Kronika's side. Kronika's objective is to prepare the hourglass with Cetrion. 
so all they have to do is play tower defense as long as possible. So my first move would be not to send out, Cybelen Kui off button, the immortal weapon, and Revenant Liu Kang who activates fire god Liu Kang, have them come back and defend the keep, instead of throwing them all into the sea, have Garrus defend you instead of these goons, have the black dragon execute Johnny and Sonya so you can also get rid of OP Cassie, and bring back all your goons who probably have nothing better to do anyway. With all this combined this should at least buy you another hour or two. Much better than just having a bunch of demons there to play dynasty warriors. What the fuck bald lady, you should be amazing with tactics after doing this 1000 times. Your APM should be on par with Korean Starcraft players. And if you wanna argue that she allowed them to try. You are welcome to try of course. Then maybe she should have tried to give them an actual challenge. <laughs> Regardless. Chronica succeeds, and the hourglass smash beans everyone. Come on son, let's go find Taven and kill Dagon to avenge your mom. Okay daddy! I'm gay. Here is your bill, ma'am. Son of a bitch. Seriously? Welp, I must say, congratulations, Rain. You deserved it. Thank you, my Zeteran friend. It is an honor to finally be back in the franchise. What in the Oshtek is going on here? Why are you not helping Raiden save the world? Uh, because I never asked. We are at war. The fate of the universe lies in our hat- Wait, have you all been playing poker while I was being executed? Ah. Uh... I feel like I should say no. Tentaka, you will all suffer the true wrath of us tech. KK in a wheelchair. Now that Shao Kahn is dead, we will need a new leader. You fools, I'm not dead yet. Yes, whatever. We, we still need a new leader. This one suggests Melina. But she is dead. And I thought you hated her. Indeed. However, this one suggests a new Melina, one created by the Time Merger. Over there. Yes. This yes. one is I like swear. I'm sorry, what the fuck is going on right now? Sindel, what are we doing in the Bone Temple? Is it not obvious? We're here because... Maybe Chronicle will be defeated, and maybe they'll release Shang Tsung and Fuji Nightwolf from the Void, and maybe they'll be sent back to the past and try to look for me, and maybe they'll be captured, and then maybe we'll be able to be here to torture them. Also, we're probably guarding Shinnok's head. Well, at least you're not retconned yet. And so Chronica resets the timeline. No matter what ending you pick, this Mortal Kombat timeline is over. And that is the end of this series. Though I've pointed out many funny mistakes. Though I think some characters are awful. Though I made this sucks series cause I think the story sucks. I still wanna say that at least it's- Seriously? I wrote this script back in 2019. And now they release a new DLC story going back in time. And that means there's more Chronica to talk about. <sighs> Alright fine, guess I'll have to make a part to them. Since she knows she fails in MK11, I'm sure Chronica will be more cautious and plan things better this time. Right? Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. <laughs>